Hello Accounting 101 students. In this video, we will go over questions four and five in the chapter one required online participation. In both of these questions, we are provided with some data and we need to be preparing some financial statements. So in question number four, we have Marigold Corporation and we are provided several accounts along with their balances and we need to prepare the income statement for the year, as well as the retained earnings statement. So we start off our income statement, noting the revenues and the expenses for the period of time. And in this problem, they ask us to prepare the income statement for the year. Therefore, from my drop-down menu, I'm going to select the year ended December 31st, 2017. And in the income statement, we will focus on reporting the total revenues. So I need to have a section for revenues, the total expenses. So I need to have a section for expenses. And at the end of this, we need to arrive at the net income for the period or a net loss in case of the expenses exceed the revenues. So I can go ahead and scroll up and see my data for this question. I see that this company has service revenue. So in my revenue section, I will type in service revenue and I will type in the dollar amount that I see in my question. And you will notice that each student may have different numbers when it comes to the required online participation as well as homework questions. For the expenses, I'm gonna list these largest to smallest. So I see this company has advertising expenses, rent expense, and salaries and wages expense, as well as utilities expense. Looking at these numbers, I can see that the largest expense this company has is salaries and wages expense. So I will include that first, and I will type in the dollar amount that I see in my problem. Next, when I look at my expenses, I can see that my rent expenses are the second highest. So I will include in the rent expenses. Next, I will see that the company's utilities expense should be listed, followed by advertising expense. And once you get all of the numbers from our problem, you will want to go ahead and add up the total expenses. So my total expenses are 47,276. Then I'm gonna go ahead and compute the net income, which will take the service revenue of 61,480 and I will subtract out my total expenses of 47,276. And when you do your work for this class, I highly recommend having a calculator next to you so that way you can go through the mathematical computations. Next, we're gonna be preparing the retained earnings statement, which is also prepared for the year. And our retained earnings statement starts off with our retained earnings at the beginning of the year. Then we add net income, which we get from the income statement. We subtract any dividends that were paid. And at the end of our retained earnings statement, we wanna get our retained earnings at the end of the period. So I'm going to look at my data and see if I have the retained earnings at the beginning of the year. If it's a beginning or a new company, you would start off with zero retained earnings. If it was a continuing company, your retained earnings will be from 
the prior year. Next, you're going to add your net income, what you're going to get from that income statement. So my income statement had 14,204. So I'm going to add in 14,204. And then I'm going to have a subtotal. So my subtotal is 85,224. And then I'm going to look at my information in my problem and see if I have any dividends. And dividends are payments that are taken from the earnings and given to the investors. So we're always going to be subtracting dividends. And it is important to note that the only place you're going to see dividends is the retained earnings statement. And we will arrive at the ending retained earnings, which will then be used on the balance sheet if that was the next part of our problem. Although this problem does not ask you to complete a balance sheet, it's important to note that some of your other problems, you will be preparing the income statement, retained earnings statement, and then the balance sheet. For question six, we have Windsor Inc that has a private camping ground and has the following financial information as of December 31st. And we can see in this problem that this company has two types of revenues. They have service revenue from camping fees as well as sales revenue from their general store. We also note that this company has summarized their total expenses and we need to come up with the net income for 2017. So we come up with our net income using the formula total revenues minus total expenses. And in our problem, we can see that our total revenues will include the service revenue. So we're going to add that to the sales revenue. After we come up with our total revenues, we will subtract out our total expenses, which are given to us in the problem. So take a few minutes to do the math, and it is helpful to have a computer handy as you go through doing the calculations for our class. In the box, you will an enter in your answer, which is 35,340. Next, we're going to go to the next part of the problem, which will be compiling the retained earnings statement. The retained earnings statement is prepared for the same period of time, so we will prepare it for the year. And our retained earnings statement starts off with the beginning retained earnings and the beginning of the year is January 1st, we will add the net income, which is coming from the income statement, and we will subtract out any dividends that will be paid to stockholders. And at the end of our calculation, we want to get to the ending retained earnings. So from our data in this question, we start off with our beginning retained earnings, that are provided at the beginning of the problem. We're going to add the net income that we got from our income statement. So the same number that you determined for net income in the income statement is being used for the retained earnings statement. And then you need to add up both of these numbers together. So you will include in 41,000. 040. And then you'll look at our data to see any dividends that were paid. So we see dividends of 10,260. So we need to subtract out 10,260 to arrive at the ending retained earnings of 30,780. After we complete the retained earnings statement, we move on to our balance sheet which is prepared as of a specific date. And we start off our assets in 
the order of liquidity. So how quickly can our assets be turned into cash? So when I look at this listing, I see cash, which will be the first asset listed. I see that this company has supplies and I see that this company has equipment. So cash will be the first asset that I would list. And then I would list supplies because we expect to use up our supplies in less than one year. So the order of our balance sheet always starts off with the most liquid assets and we start off with our current assets that we expect to use or convert to cash within a year. Then we would list our long-term assets. So our long-term asset would include that equipment. First, I'm gonna include in this amount for supplies and then I'll type in my amount for equipment. And in this problem, we are going to come up with our total assets. The next part of this problem is on the liabilities and stockholders equity. So I'm first going to pause and get our total asset. Our total assets are 145, 920. Then I need to include in my liabilities and separate out my liabilities from my equity section. So my liabilities, when I look at my data, will include notes payable of 57,000 along with accounts payable. And then you wanna add up both of these together in order to get to your total liabilities. After you come up with your total liabilities, you're gonna be working on the stockholders equity section. The two main aspects of our stockholders equity section will include common stock and retained earnings. And the common stock you will find from the data in our problem, 45,600. And for retained earnings, you don't wanna use the beginning retained earnings, you wanna use the ending retained earnings. And our ending retained earnings, you're gonna get that from our retained earnings statement. So you wanna go ahead and scroll up to our retained earnings statement in order to get to your ending retained earnings. So I'm gonna pause for a moment in order to do the math for my total liabilities, total stockholders equity, and my total liabilities and stockholders equity. The total liabilities are 69,540, and then the total stockholders equity is 76,380. And when you add up the total liabilities, and the total stockholders equity, this will equal the same 145, 920 that we calculated for total assets. And you need to make sure that these two numbers are exactly the same because they portray the basic accounting equation, which is total assets equals total liabilities and stockholders equity. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video.